Adorable Chams, you're most welcome to Everything Literature, where you get to learn about everything concerning drama, prose, and the most inspiring poetry. Take seats and enjoy the class. In our first class on types of poetry, we discuss specifically on sonnet. And for today's class, we'll be looking at some other types of poetry and the particular ones we will be focusing on will be Ode, Lyric, Elegy, and Panjeric. Once again, our focus for today's class will be on these types of poetry. Ode, Lyric, Elegy, and Panegyric. Okay, so our learning objectives for today's class are the following. One, you should get to know at the end of the day that we're focusing for today's class on these types of poetry, wild, lyric, elegy, and panegyric. Second, what is held? Features of held. Third, what is a lyric poem? Are all poems lyric in nature? Features of lyric poem. Four, what is elegy and dirge? All the forms of elegy, thrunody, coronach, and monody. Difference between elegy and dirge. Last but not the least, what is panegyric? What are the features of panegyric? So what type of poetry is and how? Taking a look at the origin and definition. The word held comes from the Greek word herdin, which means to sing or to chant. And hold is a type of lyric poem. It is an elaborately structured poem, though the regular meter, praising or glorifying an event or an individual describing nature intellectually as well as emotionally now what do how do we describe the nature of an ode it is a lyric poem in an elaborate form expressed in a language that is imaginative dignified and sincere like the lyric an ode is of Greek origin. On a closer outlook, an ode is a poem written to praise the deed of a person or a thing. Now, by the time we get to panegyric, these would make the difference because a, a, an ode is a poem written to praise the deed of a person or a thing, while panegyric is specifically to press the person so do not forget the origin of the word hold is from the greek word herdin and it means to sing or to chant why do you sing what do you chant about you chant about the praises of a person you sing the praises of a person okay you sing to glorify an event or an individual or it could possibly nature okay and when you do this when in hold is being rendered it is done in an elaborate form it is expressed in a language that is imaginative dignified and sincere um, examples of hold famous examples we have Melton's held to the morning of Christ nativity to the Lord General Cromwell May 1652 and some romantic hordes includes William Wordsworth's Held imitations of immortality, John Keats held to the nightingale, held to autumn, and held on a Grecian hand. And also we have Shelley's held to the west wind. These are like the famous examples of holds that we have in poetry. Moving away from the definition and the origin of what Hurd is all about, we need to take a look at the structure of an old poem. Now, the old 
and old as three basic structure traditionally okay the three basic structures are the strophe the antistrophe and the apod okay talking about the strophe in a greek ode the strophe usually consists of two or more lines repeated as a unit two or more lines repeated as a unit in modern usage the term strophe can refer to any group of verses that form a distinct unit within a poem the antistrophe the second session or stanza of an ode is structured the same way as the strophe but typically offers a thematic counterbalance okay so the same structure but the thematic preoccupation is being altered so let's assume we have the first stanza presenting a problem the second stanza actually presents a kind of solution okay so that is what we mean by strophe and antistrophe it's more or less like the climax and anti-climax okay exactly and the airport this section or stanza typically has a distinct middle and length from the strophe and the antistrophe and serves to summarize or conclude the ideas of the ode so it's more or less like the strophe presents the problem the antistrophe present the solution the airport summarizes what the old herds is all about what a poem is all about okay i hope this is clear now taking a look at the types of hold we have three types of holds this should not be confused for the structure of an hold structure has to do with the way you can get to write an hold as a poem but the types has to do with the kinds of holds that we have over time so we have number one the pindaric herd so this is actually named after a, a greek writer we have the horatian herd and we have the irregular herd so irregular herd has to do with the nature of the meter that is the meter is not regular the way as you would expect to have in the traditional which is the pindaric herd in the pindaric chord it follows the structure of the strophe the antistrophe and the airport okay the Eurasian just named after the roman uh, writer boris okay so that's just for the basic level that you need to know from now so let's take a look at sample of an hold let's examine held to the ninth and gay by john keats and it read thus my heart hates and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as still of emlock had drunk or emptied some dull hop heads to the drains one minute passed and the little words had sung there is not through envy of thy happy lot but being too happy in thy happiness that though light wind Brand of the trees in some melodious plots of peach and green and shadows numberless singest of summer in full thoughted ease so this is just a sample of an ode to nightingale nightingale is actually a bird okay and we have the writer actually singing in praises of some experience of his with the night and gay okay we are going to actually have an analysis on this poem in one of our classes but this for now is just to illustrate to us how and how it looks like so we have held to the night and gay by john keats being examined we move to the next one lyric poem lyric poem should not be confused for lyrics as we have the lyrics of a song okay to quite related but should not be confused so we have lyric and the basic way we should understand it is that lyric is from origin it's originated from uh the musical instrument called lyre okay so we're gonna get there so what do we mean by a lyric poem a lyric poem is a short 
highly musical verse that conveys powerful feelings. The poet may use rhyme, mirror, or other literary devices to create a song-like quality. Okay, so that's to tell us that it's a short poem, it's musical in nature, and it conveys powerful feelings. Okay, and the poet may get to use some certain um, literary techniques, literary devices such as rhyme, meter, and some other devices just to make it sound like a song. Okay, so let's get to know the origin and nature of a lyric poem. In its original form, the lyric was a poem sung to the accompaniment of a lyre. A lyre is a classical string musical instrument. So there's an instrument, if we remember someone like the uh, like David in the Bible, he played this instrument called lyre, okay? And when it's being played, uh, there is a kind of poem being rendered along with it. So such poems are called lyric poem. In the Greek classical period, it was sung by a single singer. Okay, so what are the features of a lyric poem, both in the traditional and in the modern sense? The term is now applied to describe a poem that is light in tone, could be adapted into a song and reflect the personal mode of feeling of the singer or poet. So three things we must take note of here. It is light in turn, could be adapted into a song and reflect the personal mode or feeling of a poet. Now, since the true quality of the lyric is the personal element that is as a vehicle of the poet's mode, that is, it expresses the mood of a poet. Now, it is a means of expressing uh, individual sensibility. Also, the hold, the sonnet, as well as the elegy, can be classified as lyric poem. So, this is just to justify the fact that since it communicates the mood of a poet, a poem such as Ode, the sonnet, and even elegy can be classified as lyric. Most poems can be classified as lyrics, actually. Okay, and we have three subtypes of lyric poem just generally being sub uh, typed okay so we have the lyric of vision we have lyric of thought and lyric of emotion so there are some lyric poem that speaks about emotion it appeals to our emotion uh lyric of vision it speaks about insights words of wisdom lyric of thought uh, speaks about some inner feelings and things like that so some classification of poems such as cage bird can fall into lyric of thought because it's actually communicating the thoughts of a writer and at the same time it can be classified on the lyric of emotion because it expresses the emotion of a bird that has been caged so let's take a look at the sample of a lyric poem the poem we're going to be considering for today's class is the word is too much with us by William Wordsworth. He is one of the romantic uh, writer who was able to write a lyric poem of her time. So the poem read thus The word is too much with us, late and soon. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away. A sordid boon, they see that bears are bosom to the moon. The winds that will be howling at all hearts and are upgathered now like sleeping flowers. For this, for everything we are out of turn, it moves us not. Great God, I would rather be a pagan sucking in the out one so my eyes standing on this pleasantly i have glimpses that would make me less forlorn i have sight of praetors rising from the sea or hear who triton blow is rhythm hand i just hope you you enjoy the poem the word is too much with us this very comp a, a self-reflective poem it requires for contemplation okay the uh, poet talking about a lot of things majorly about the uh, 
things going around us in our environment relating it to nature and how they get to have a lot to say about our social sensibilities about our personal opinion and decision making okay so we're going to have another analysis a class analysis on these poems very soon sometimes later okay but this is just to tell us about how a lyric poem looks like the next one is an elegy an elegy from the greek word elegeha which means song of morning obsequies which is a latin word for funeral or follow out then we have threnody which is a greek meaning to sing a dirge monody which is a greek for singing alone all these are basically different names for a genre of poetry that focuses on the sorrow of something ending and is a sad and plaintive poem now what do we mean by elegy because we've tried to mix up elegy obsequies monody threnody and the likes to referring to a type of poem that denotes or should i say connote at the same time sorrow okay but specifically an elegy is a written poem take note of the word written because that's what distinguishes it number one from dirge it is written to a written poem of serious reflection usually a lamentation for the dead that reflect upon death or loss so the subject matter of elegy is usually about death or loss traditionally it contains themes of mourning loss and reflection however it can also explore themes of redemption and consolation but the primary themes has to do with mourning loss and reflection this term the term elegy refers to a poetic verse that is phrased in elegiac couplets so originally traditionally we have the concept of elegiac couplets examples of elegy includes john melton's lisi does Alfred Tennyson's In Memoriam this is one of like, the most common uh, examples of elegy. We have W. H. Alden's In Memory of W. B. Gist and William Gray's Elegy written in a country church record. So with the fact we establish that elegy is a sorrowful poem and it's usually written a written sorrowful poem. We need to take a uh, take note of this. We have what we call the forms of elegy. Forms comes uh, in various forms. We have the dirge, we have the threnody, we have the cornet, we have the monody as well. So let's quickly take a look at them. What do we mean by dirge? Dirge is a brief, spontaneous outburst of a song of lamentation or grief. So it is a brief. It is not long as an elegy. And it is spontaneous. That is, um, it is not something that we really contemplate on or meditate on. That is taking our time to write. It is spontaneous. Okay, it's an outburst. It is typically performed at a funeral or at a point of an unfortunate incident. In lyric poetry, a dirge tends to be shorter and less meditative than an elegy. Okay. For example, we have Christina Rossetti, a dirge. We're going to take a look at this. And Sir uh, Philip Sidney's Ring Out Your Bells. So these are a common examples of a dirge. Take note of the difference between a dirge and an elegy. An elegy is usually written and it is longer. A dirge is brief and it is spontaneous. Threnody, which is a other form of elegy, we have it to be a song or hymn of mourning composed or performed as a memorial to a dead person. Corona. Now, Corona is a term related to the Celtic tradition and has to do with a funeral song usually rendered by the Celtic women. It is a spontaneous sorrowful poem 
So it's more or less like another name for Threnody. The only difference is that uh, based on the geographical origin of it. So uh, uh, Threnody may likely be referred to as a cognac when you get to the Irish part of the world, like the Celtic uh, tradition related. Then Monody just has to do with the word mono. Mono simply means one. So from the Greek word singing along, it's an elegy meant to be sung by a single mourner. So a monody can be referred to as a form of elegy that is being rendered by a single mourner. Okay, so a, it, a, it's a jaron of usually short verse that laments a death with, uh, with the structure of the expression at the discretion of a poet. So uh, the nature by which the poem is going to be rendered is at the discretion of the poet. The poet may decide to make the sobbing sound uh, lower, then rises or a turn, and different. It's just due to the way the mourner, who, who happens to be a single person, wants to mourn or wants to express his or her sorrowful state. So, a, a very good example to differentiate between allergy and dirge are these two poems. The Casualties by J.P. Clark, John Pepe Clark, Bakerte Remo. Okay, he happens to be Nigerian. And we have A Dirge by Christina Rossetti. So if you take a look at it, just on the surface, you have the casualty appearing to be longer than A Dirge. And the casualty is actually meant to be written while a dirge normally may actually be captured in words uh, in, in written form, but naturally it's meant to be spontaneous. So well, we may not take too much time reading through these. Just let me take a stanza uh, from the casualty. We have it. The casualties are not only those who are dead. They are well out of it. The casualties are not only those who are dead. Though they await burial by instalment, the casualties are not only those who are lost. Persons or property, hard as it is to group for a touch that some may not know is not there. Okay, yeah, such a powerful poem by J.P. Clark. Uh, just to reflect on the incident of 1966, the Civil War. Okay, then we have a dirge by Christina Rossetti. Why were you born when the snow was falling? You should have come to the cuckoo's calling, or when grapes are green in the cluster, or at least when lie the swallows monster for the far off flying from summer dying. Why did you die when the lambs were cropping? You should have died at the apples dropping when the grasshopper comes to trouble. Nay, with fields are sodden stubble. No winds go sighing for sweet things dying. Okay, so that's that's on allergy and dirge. Let's move to the last one for today, which would be panegyric. In rhetorics, panegyric is a speech or written composition that offers praise for an individual or an institution. It's a form of encomium or eulogy. Okay, so that means it's meant to praise as well. Okay, this is an elaborate poem written or sung in praise of a person. It originated as a type of cult poetry, okay? So where we have a bard or a griot actually singing the praises of a king. That's what we mean by cult poetry. So the bard, the poet is meant to sing praises of the king, to praise the king. Okay, the essence of panegyric is to mix of metaphor, history, praise, and linguistic repertoire. You know, the, 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 the poet is actually trying to put in a lot of things together at the same time. And we just quickly need to chip this in. Major difference between panegyric and odes is this while hood praises the deed of a person or thing, panegyric hymns at prison the person or thing personally is the person himself 
not just the deed of a person, the person himself. Okay, so the Yoruba culture, the Yoruba tradition, part of Nigeria actually makes use of panegyric when they want to praise a person, not just the deed alone, the person himself. They they go into history, they make his metaphor, and they are putting a a, a dexterity of linguistic repertoire so as to have the panegyric of a person being achieved. So we just take a sample look at Shakespearean panegyric. This is actually accepted from, uh, it's an excerpt from um, William Shakespeare's um, King Richard II. Uh, Act 2, scene 1. Okay, say, this royal throne of kings, this capital hall, this hearth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this or the Eden, demi paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the end of war. This happy breed of men, this little war, this precious stone set in the silver sea, which serves it in the office of a war, or has a mouth defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands. This blessed blood, this earth, this realm, this England. So this is more or less like a, a praise of the royal thrones of kings and talking specifically about the nature of how the environment of England was at that time. Okay, so with this we come, we've come to the end of the class and in summary we've taken a look at uh, types of poetry uh, different from the first class we had on types of poetry which happens to focus on sonnets for today's class we focused on odd ode um, elegy lyric and panegyric and we talked about words and holdies and holdies a type of poem it's a lyrical poem written in an elaborate structured pattern to praise or glorify an event or deed of an individual elegy we said it's a term referred to a written poetic verse that is phrased in elegiac couplets addressing topics such as loss death love hmm, love in terms of mourning love not to celebrate love and war then lyric a lyric poem not related to the instrument lyre okay so it's a, it's a short poem early musical verse that conveys powerful feelings the poets may use rhyme meter and other literary devices just to make it sound like a music okay and panegyric oh simply praise praise you praise the person it's an elaborate poem written or song in praise of a person it is a type of court poetry that is its originator as a court poetry with this i hope you enjoy the class such a very long one but i hope you really enjoyed it it's worthwhile you can get to revise by watching the video again and to support these you love what you've learned in today's class please do well to hit the notification button to get more of this educational video and also subscribe and we get to see you in the next class i'm olamide for everything literature